Rod, what would you say what will, what will happen if we got the news now that all the lions and the cheetahs and the leopards and the wild dogs, all the predators, natural predators, including national park, has died out. There's no more predators. What will happen to all the grazers and the other animals? The prey animals. Yeah. They would burst at the seams in terms of numbers because they wouldn't, would have no predator to keep their numbers down. Okay. So all those animals would increase in, in number. Yeah. Remarkably. Yeah. And eventually they'll eat themselves into the extension as well. They probably would do that too, yes. Now, what is the natural predator of the elephant? There's only one natural predator for the elephant, um, but a significant one, and that is man. Man is, is the natural predator of the African elephant. But now man has been taken out of the equation because for some reason we cannot hunt elephants anymore. Man has been taken out of the equation for a very simple reason. It was because overseas there is a, a movement afoot now called the animal rights movement where people in America and Europe and all over the, all over the world are saying that we have got no right to, to manage elephants. Nature should do that itself. And um, if, if any government in Africa culled elephants, um, from now on, they would bring in um, massive tourism boycotts of the countries that practice cunning because we don't agree with it. So now we've got a situation whereby the people in America and Europe are dictating to us and telling our wildlife managers how they should manage their national parks. Okay, now, so a lot of rumors about how many elephants there are included at this site, some say 40,000, some say 20,000. Do you have an idea of the correct figure? If you use mathematics um, and and take the, the, the end of the culling period, which was 1994, when we know there were 7,000 elephants then, and we know the rate of increase, mm. there should be somewhere in the region of about um, 56,000 elephants mm. in Kruinda, but nobody knows that. Mm. Uh, the, the counts have not been that accurate. So yesterday I actually phoned Kruger National Park and I spoke to people that I know and respect in Kruinda mm. and I asked them, what is, what is the number of elephants that you people are accepting as, as the, the, um, um, resident population of elephants in Kruger today. How, how many elephants are there? And they said, well, we, we, we've, um, we discussed the fact that it may be up into the, into the 50,000s, as I had just said. Mm. And a lot of people say, hey, isn't that much? It's, it's down as bitter, 30,000. I said, well, I've heard a, a, a radiant figure of 34,000 being mentioned by people in Kruger. Mm. Uh, how does that sit with you? And they said, that's probably as near as damn it as you're going to get to what it really is, because that is a number that, that is acceptable to the people in Kruger, is 34,000, although it's by no means um, 100% accurate. Okay, that's why the huge devastation is perceived taking place in Kruger at this stage. Please. So what did you say? What, what's the carrying capacity? The, the carrying capacity is 3,500 elephants for the whole of Kruger. Yeah. For that's one elephant per. That's one elephant per two square miles, or one elephant per five, per nine square kilometers. Okay. So, in the fifties and early sixties, they knew there was three and a half thousand elephants in Kruger, and at that time there wasn't any damage done to the trees and vegetation. Throughout the nineteen fifties. Yeah. There were, there were, there's no published record of how many trees were destroyed by elephants in the, in the big tree sample size that they put in, in the Satara area, for example. Mm. And in, in the 1950s, um, there, there were no big trees damaged. Now that tells, that tells me something. It tells me that if, if the numbers of elephants were, um, were not damaging the trees, then that number of elephants, um, that number of elephants must be within the carrying capacity. Mm. 
at that stage, nobody knew what it was. Yeah. Um, and it was 10 years after that, we get a, a proper count of the elephants at 7,000. Now, elephant populations du double their numbers every 10 years. Now, if in 1965, there were 7,000 um, elephants in Kruger, and they were then damaging the trees, mm -hmm. then you know that that is too much. Yeah. What we've got to say to ourselves then is, what was the number of elephants in the 1950s when there was no damage to the trees? Yeah. Now, the easiest way to do that is to say in 1965, we know there were 7,000. If we go, if you want to find out what it was 10 years prior to that, you just half 7,000 and that gives you what, what the carrying capacity was in the 1950s. And that's 3,500. 3, yeah. Okay, but now we're sitting with 74,000 elephants. So there's definitely a, a huge elephant reduction program that is needed at this stage. By the way, what did, what's the difference between reduction and current? Culling you take off the annual increment. Okay. If if your if your elephant population is is a thousand or two thousand or three thousand yeah. at the beginning of the year and it, it's at the end of the year when you count your elephants again you find that you've got an extra five hundred. Yeah. yeah. The next year you do apply a cunning program which takes off that 500 and reduces it down to the number that you want it to be. No, so <clears throat> what Kruger needs at this stage urgently is not really cutting but they need a reduction program. Yes. Kruger doesn't need a cutting program. Yeah. Kruger needs a population reduction exercise. Now that means is you, you can select arbitrarily, mathematically, you can you can select what you want to achieve in your elephant population. And what we want to achieve in the elephant population is, of well, Kruger, is you want, you want the numbers of elephants to be within the carrying capacity of the habitat, because the, the carry capacity of a habitat it tells you the maximum number of elephants that you can carry without those elephants damaging the habitat. No. So, so in, this, in this case of Kruger, we are stuck in Three and a half thousand yes. elephants, that should be a safe number. Yes. So, should be. so they need to get rid of or reduce a vast amount of elephants. 30,500. Okay. Now, this reduction process it can include cutting. It can do, yes. It can be part of the thing. Which I think, I, I might be wrong, correct me. Uh, would be the right way to go because now you've got all those byproducts. You've got the meat, you've got the skin, you've got the ivory. Nothing goes to waste. Well, there are those people like your animal rights people overseas, like the British Parliament, for example, who don't want us to bring in uh, trophy animals into England. Mm. Um, these are segments that are made and decisions are being made by people in another country who know nothing about what they're talking about, not they? Um, if, if, what, if you listen to the animal writers, they say if we leave nature to itself, they will sort it out. And um, you don't have to cut it if it's nature will sort it out. That's bunkum. That, that it is rubbish. Oh, you need to add it. Good. That's rubbish. Um, you, if if you lift nature to, if you lift elephants to the, to their own, own own devices, you're going to end up in the desert, and you're going to end up losing species, which means you will not be be carrying out your 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 directive from Parliament. Directive is to maintain species diversity. Yeah. It's not to look after every other maybe elephant. Yeah. It's it's specific. So, I think the main idea of our conversation here is to let the public. No, open in South Africa. Yes. We don't care about what they think in America, the United States, or no. whatever those places. We need the South African public to understand this problem because I don't think they realize what the situation is. So they're very quiet. Well, the, the organization of which I'm the CEO, the True Green Alliance, mm. its purpose is to, create, is to create an informed public but the principles and practices of wildlife management. Correct. So it's, it's my mandate, it's my organization's mandate 
to educate the public into all these matters. And lots of people have got the wrong end of the stick. They think that all we want to do is to, is to go out and kill elephants. That's not the case yes. at all. What we have to do, we have to support sand, pa sand parks. Mm. It's no good saying, let us members of the public get together and get money and sort out the woodlands, receive the woodlands and, and things like that. It's not our job to do that. It's Sand Park's job to do that. It's our job to understand what the problem is and to give Sand Parks, the people in Sand Parks, mm. our support to get all these things down. I can tell you now that there's no point in, in, in saying that uh, um, we're not going to kill any more elephants because the, the woodlands that have already been destroyed have got to be, re be repaired. That means they've got to be reseeded and you're going to have to put up fences and all sorts of things to keep the elephants and the empire and everything else out from the young seed leaks that are coming up. But what we have to do, we, we can't say, well, we're going to go and bulldoze our, our, our way in there and we are going to um, usurp the sand park's job and we're going to re uh, help these woodlands to recover. It's not our job to do that, but we could help immensely by organizing school kids to collect the seeds of acacia trees and things like that and, and, and raise the funds within the South African public and to support sand parks. I don't want to be able to help sand parks say to me, what the hell are you doing here? This is not your job. Yeah. And they'd be quite right. Yeah. So all I can say to South Africans is we've got to support sand parks when they are doing the right thing because they don't always do the right thing. Mm. And I'm critical of them when they don't do the right thing. Mm. Um, but it's not always their fault. It's due to outside pressure. A lot of it is due to outside pressure, yes. They're well, actually being sabotaged of doing their job that they had the mandate. For. Yes. And our, our academics as well have to, be, ha have to watch what they say and what they do. Mm. We've had academics in this country over the last um, 20, 30 years who have accepted huge amounts of money from your animal rights movements overseas in order to tell the public in South Africa that there's no need to cut elephants. So, so again, this is where TGA comes in to keep the public informed. Keep them informed. Uh, nothing but to do. We've got one professor who, who has been operative in this country for the last 20, 30 years, <clears throat> who has accepted to buy knowledge more than 9 million rand for him to put the pressure on to make sure that that no cutting of elephants ever takes place again. And the the animal rights movement that did that was IFO, the International Fund for Animal Welfare. Mm -hmm. They put up the money, it was put into a bank account for the professor to do whatever research he had to do. But the whole drive was to say, we don't need to cut elephants. 